guys over here. So today I would like to make a video on Streamlit Google Sheets automation. If you have seen my previous video, it was on Streamlit Notions automation using Notions API. If you have not seen my video, please go and visit that video once and let me know how is it. You can please leave your comments out there. So coming back to this particular video. So recently I bumped onto this particular uh, article which was published by Streamlit itself where they said how to connect to several databases. One of them is Google Sheet. So I thought Google Sheet is one of the most commonly used databases for us. So in order to connect to Google Sheet, what we need to do was very well elaborately written in that particular article. I will just pull that up here. So yeah, in order to connect to Streamlit database, you have to obtain few of these. Uh, you have to have a, create a service account key, you have to have a key file, it's very easy to use, we just need to follow this and from there what you get is a .json file. So if you download the .json file, what all you need to do is, you need to create a .streamlit folder. So this folder will be within the folder where you have your Python code to run your uh, Streamlit app locally. So in, if you go inside this .streamlit folder, you have the secrets.toml file. So everything which you receive from um, the content which you copied from this particular .json uh, file, paste it here. That's all you have to do. And then one of the important part is link your Google Sheets with the service account. So once this is done, what we can do is make a very simple front end using Google Sheets as our primary database. So what I did actually was, I would like to demonstrate here, it will be a nice overview, overview of it. I'll pull that up here. So here it comes. So it's a very basic front end using the Google spreadsheet. So what we have here, we have a database of several uh, chemical IDs. From where I obtain this chemical ID, it's from this particular website called PubChem, where scientists and this chemist people really go and uh, in order to understand the particular chemicals, they search it here and they get a lot of chemical IDs out here. We can download this uh, entire sheet of files, down 50,000 of chemical IDs based on COVID-19 search. And I took around 50 of them. So I made a Google sheet file, which is kind of connected with my uh, API service key. And I made this worksheet called CID, which is chemical ID, and then comes a pending chemical IDs. So this is the means where, you know, your users can act with your app. So basically, if your user put some name like 456 out here in your app, and they confirm it. So basically, all this, it, this particular new CID is coming to your database out here. So if you see out here, soon it will be showing our confirmation message. It's updated to Google Sheet. And we see it's coming here. So here, everything what your users inputting is coming to our sheet. And then you have your main database. So whatever you like from this database, you can actually transform to your main database. So this is one of the aspect. Other aspect is whenever you go through your database, you search any of them, you run it, you come to have some information about your molecular weight or molecular formula and also you get a visualization how it looks so in order to do that i wrote few lines of python codes and that's enough to build this very small ui or a front-end user interface so now we will go to the, the code basically so i'll bring my file out here the basically the, the snippet out here I will actually make myself smaller. How to do that? Oh, hi guys. Now I don't know. It's lagging. Oh, perfect. So let me put myself here. Everything is set. So we have imported a few models. So one of the model is like the input stream layer, as we know, pandas because we have arrays of data. Then we have this Google Spread Panda. This is one of the most important uh, module out here because we actually extract all the information from that Google Spreadsheet. And we also need to authenticate ourselves. Then a very relatable module based on this application is this PubKimPy. And uh, for my 
particular computer right now i always need this um, in order to disable the certificate verification maybe some of you need so i just put it here then we start with this create a google authentication connection object we enter the scope we enter the credentials and we say in the credentials that the secrets can be fetched from our secrets or tournament file so this is where the purpose of the secrets or tournament comes we create our client so we name our spreadsheet as database as i showed before the spreadsheet's name was database so we connect to the spreadsheet and let's check if the connection is there or not so what we need to do is it's very simple you need to write st st dot write Okay, cool. Spread dot URL. So this will actually show us the URL from where it is. It's not a nice way of checking if the connection is there, but it's just a test out here. So I will run this particular script. I'm expecting to have my local host out here. Let me put one of the screen here. run so yeah it starts to come up here so here we have we have the stimulate chemical inventory already and So let's do all this here. Let's see what if is there any change or not. Yeah, so look, we already get the spreadsheet name. I mean, the, the link actually. Basically. So if you click it, we can go to that. So we are not showing this in our real UI. It's just to show that, make sure that you know, the stream is connected out here with the database. So this is our database, basically. Let's close this page. Let's come here. So let's start writing a few stuffs. I would. Uh, kind of focus on the code now. I will mainly copy and paste from my previous routine script. So it's just a copy paste, but I will go through each and every codes. So let's do that. So now after, since it seems like it's working quite well, what we do out here is we call our spreadsheets out here. And then we have the function. So the three main functions out here is to get all the spreadsheets name. We have this uh, we have this particular CID, the compound, uh, the compound IDs, and also we have this uh, what is called out here, as we saw before, is like uh, the one where the user can send their request. So that forgot the name actually. So that's called as pending CID. Yes, perfect. And another one is to update the CID. So that's something three functions which we have, and the load spreadsheet also where we can load the entire spreadsheet. So how we do this? So the first thing is let's try to put a header we already have, check whether sheets exist and through sheets to the users. So for that, let me copy this part. So we call our function where we try to get all the spreadsheet name and let, let's then try to make a radio button which is populated with all the sheets name so all the spreadsheets name you know uh, what we have in our uh, the entire spreadsheet the two worksheets which we have we will populate with that so let's see if it works or not ah, this is not the one yes out here so look we already have our available worksheets which we named out here now what we try to do is we'll try to create a select box so that we can actually dump all our CIDs out there. So for that, what we need to do first here is we need to load our spreadsheet, which is chosen out here. So let's say if we choose the spreadsheet, which has the CIDs, all the chemical IDs, we need to load that first. And then what we need to show is the availability of the selection. So basically we throw the list of CIDs which we have. For that, I will just copy this part. Okay, now let's run it. It's, it's running behind. So 
So look, we have this select box with all the CIDs which we have in our database. It's very simple. And then we can actually use the PubK module to dump more information to the if a user is interested to see what the CID stands for, I mean, what are these chemical components are, we can dump all the this PubChem information. So that's where the module uh, PubChem pie comes handy. So let's do that actually. So I'll copy the snippets. Here it goes. And also what information to look for. So for that, I will also copy here this part. Okay. So let's see now how it looks. So it's running there. So look, we have all our CIDs. Now, if the user wants to see molecular weight, it comes here. That's perfect. Now let's say we want to make our visualization interesting. So we want some plot along with that. So what do we do for that? We use another model actually. So let me first import that model out here. I don't think we have imported before. No model for this. What we need is basically models. So pi smiles is something which takes the smile confirmation for chemicals and read it. We need these networks for making these nodal graphs kind of and we need this mat plot loop for plotting it. Also I need this date time later so I will keep it here for time later. Yes. So now we need to create where we can actually plot something. So if the user is interested to plot, what do we say plot? Stream like a checkbox. Please put the structure. So here, and then we say if plot, we will put the snippet here. Let's do that. It's not. Yeah, perfect. So let's see what this gives us now. It's running. I hope it works properly. No. So we get an error. Ah, I see. So this will be check. Check. Sorry, my bad. So we have this. We press it. Ah, so here, here we get the structure or the, the, the smile structure of our chemical compound. Now let's say we have to make this place where we, where other users who, with whom, let's say the owner of this database have shared this app. So the other users can also add something. For that, what we need to do is, let's say we add a, add check box so if the user adds this thing what inputs will come we paste it here so the user can input the new CID and also then the user needs to confirm it and then if the user confirms it what will happen so for that if the user confirms it so then we will actually take the date time the current users uh, usage time and then we also make a data frame there and we just kind of you know append to data frames and then we just send it back to our spreadsheet so that's all for this. And then we are kind of prepared with a simple inventory database. So now when it's running, you will see this. Let me add this. Here it is. Then I click it. Let's say now you add something 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Confirm it as I shown before. 
you know, to make it much more faster, we can add this uh, streamlead.catch to make this uh, process much faster than all the pro uh, all of this on run on the specific functions will be run. That's a very powerful function which Streamlit has. But nevertheless, so we add something in our pending CI four five six seven just now it is added out here. So let's try to add some new structure. Let's say we add something called benzoic acid. So let's check if it works properly or not. So it's called two forty two. Now it's a very proper one. Let's directly add to our main database. Let's not wait for our pending approval. So if we do that, and we just need to restart this when it loads again, we can actually add this restart app button. So now what we see out here is 243 is there. Now we, when we click it, we all know the benzene ring. Okay. So let's see how it looks here. It's a benzoic acid. Ah, it's a benzene ring with its uh, acidic group, the acyl group, actually. Sorry, the CWH group. Yes, it's a benzoic acid. Perfect. We can add more stuff also. We can add something called something good looking. So let's add this bulk mixture through. It's a very famous one. Let's go back. Let's come here. Or shall we add like this? Yeah, we can add like this. Or let me just directly add it here. Otherwise, anyways, I have to take it back since we are not automated yet in that way. So now, if I restart this app, fullerene is you know, really pretty looking actually. So let's look at how it looks. Please add uh, plot the structure for me. Here is our plot, Mr. Free. Isn't it amazing looking? Yes, it is. So, just with few lines of codes, actually, you know, we can. I'll come back. Yes, 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 perfect. So, just with few lines of code, we can make a very simple front end with Google Sheet as a database, which is very powerful, actually. You know, we can always access it. We can add more buttons to it. We can add a delete button to it. We can make some, you know, uh, let's say, some password protection where we add another sheet out here. We only allow the people whom we know, and only they are allowed to fetch data and add data from here. So a lot of things is possible. It's an enormous uh, extensibility when we have Google Sheet as a database. So I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys will try it. I will for sure leave. Uh, uh, link to the code which you can access and if you like it please let me know how is it give me feedback if there is some bugs please let me know and just give me more ideas how this can be extended or what more can we do with this set of it so that's all for today thank you so much and please if you like it just subscribe thank you